We are in the Tadnac yard in the Kamiko plant at Tadnac, B.C. Engine number 8719 is just hooked onto the caboose, and we're backing down the yard now to pick up the uh, yard, the section crew, and two or three cars to take up the hill to Rosslyn. The conductor on this trip is Ed Waterer, and the engineer is Ray Kamiski. We're now in the Tadnac yard. You can hear the shunting trains going by. Uh, on this trip, the locomotive and caboose will be pushing a string of cars up the hill because there are no passing tracks left in Roslyn. They have been taken up. Only the main track is left, so that the locomotive will push its load up the hill. Three days ago, the first train went up this hill since the abandonment of the line in March. Because of rusty rail and because of the grass that has grown over the track, considerable experience was, uh, uh, considerable difficulty was experienced in getting the train up to Rosland. Uh, they were pushing three gondolas and three flat cars, plus the large crane that is being used for lifting the rails. And at several spots, because of the tight curvature, the rusty rail, and because of the slippery grass on the track, the locomotive stalled. And engineer Ray Kamiski had his work cut out for him to get the outfit up the hill that day. However, now that several trips have been made up the line, the trip today should be a little easier. There is a possibility of stalling, but in all probability, there will not be too much difficulty. You can hear the diesel locomotive idling. It's connected directly in front of the caboose here. We're waiting in the yard now. The crew is gathering, and in a few minutes, we will be taking off for the trip up to Rosslyn. The train is now moving ahead in the Tadnac yard, moving very slowly now toward the end of the yard and to the main track out of the Tadnac yard heading for Rosslyn. This morning we are pushing four gondola cars ahead of us. There are train men riding in the front gondola car because, as we said before, we are pushing this string of cars up the hill to Rosslyn. You can hear the locomotive beginning to push now. In a minute we'll be approaching the crossing at Tadnac. You'll hear the locomotive whistle for the crossing. People are just beginning to come to work here. This is the office staff are just streaming in. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. That's the whistle. We're on the curve now. The locomotive is really beginning to push. We are still on the section of track that will not be abandoned. This is the section of track to Warfield. When we get to Warfield, then we will begin the 7.5 miles of track that is now being removed. At this stage, we're leaving Tadnac. We're on the upgrade, and we're rounding the curve that, whereby we can look down from the uh, train into the gulch at Trail, and we're heading toward uh, the uh, Annabelle subdivision. The train is now approaching Annabel, and in a minute or two now we'll be going around the big curve at Annabel that swings back up to the Warfield Flat. This is pretty well the general route of the narrow gauge road as it wound its way up to Warfield. You can hear the flanges squeal on this curve. This is a big long curve at Annabel and the uh, noise of the, from the rails and the wheels makes quite a sound here as the locomotive pushes this string of cars now up the steep hill onto Warfield Flat. Again, we're following pretty closely to the old narrow gauge route. We're now passing over the highway interpass just below the flats of Warfield. And on our left here is an area where the old narrow gauge roadbed used to swing around into the hillside. This has only just recently been obliterated, but uh, old timers will remember the exact spot. 
We're now coming through the cut on the curve into Warfield Flats. And on the right-hand side of the train, there still remains a section of the old narrow-gauge roadbed, which although is becoming overgrown with grass, is still visible in, in Warfield here. At this stage, we are now leaving Warfield. We are entering upon the last 7.5 miles of track, which is the mileage of track that's now been abandoned to Rossland. And uh, these are the rails that will now be coming up. From this point on is the abandoned track. The section of track we are now on meanders through uh, fields on the hillside here. It's not too steep. But up ahead of us in the valley, the valley begins to narrow and the uh, valley sides become steeper. And uh, a mile or so ahead of us now is the approach to the switchback, which is the unique feature of this line. And uh, soon the locomotive and the uh, cars ahead will be entering the sharp turn that leads into the first loop of the switchback. It's a beautiful sunny morning on this trip and the hillsides are in bloom with syringa bushes and elderberry bushes which are just a mass of bloom this morning. It's really a pleasant ride going up this hill to Rosslyn this morning. At this point in the track we're going alongside the old Rosslyn Road which of course is now abandoned for the modern highway. The valley is narrowing ahead of us now and we're approaching the beginning of the loop of the switchback. It's just a short distance ahead now and soon the uh, front end of the train will be entering the cut leads us into the switchback. We're now proceeding through the cut on the bottom loop of the switchback. You can hear the wheel flanges scream on this tight turn. The other day the locomotive got stuck in here but the rails are dry enough now that he's able to push straight through. At the present moment, we're entering upon the switch at the lower end of the switchback, which uh, is known in, uh, on the railway uh, timetables as Tiger. The engineer has cut the throttle now, and the train is drifting in over the switch. At this point, the train is now proceeding backwards up the a uh, mile long uh, swing back of the switchback. At the moment we're on a straight stretch of track, but presently we'll go on to a big wide loop that swings in toward the golf course and then back into the mountainside up toward Crown Point, which is the top station or switch on the switchback. The train has just proceeded around the big loop on the switchback and is now beginning to go up the long tangent run which is fairly steep up to the switch at Crown Point. The train is still moving backwards. You can hear the wheels screaming as we come onto the switch at Crown Point. The train is moving backwards over the switch now and will be slowing to a stop and then we will be moving ahead and proceeding then on to Rosslyn. At this juncture, one of our four gondolas is being switched out here at the switchback and being left on the bottom leg of the switchback. We'll pick up the other three and then proceed on up the hill to Rosslyn. The bang you hear is the cars being coupled and gone again to the engine in preparation for the trip up the hill to Rosslyn from the switchback. We are now at Crown Point. Right now we are proceeding back down the switchback again. We're going to spot this one car we've taken out. We're going to take it down toward the bottom of the switchback and spot it down here for the uh, section crew.
We've run all the way back down the switchback to Tiger again, and we're going to spot this car at Tiger. Then we will reverse and go back up to Crown Point and pick up the remainder of the train and then proceed to Rosslyn. The present standard gauge switchback is on a different location from the original narrow gauge switchback. This was changed when the CPR took over from Heinze and broadened the gauge of the road. You can still see remains of the old narrow gauge roadbed in this vicinity. Yeah. The train has spotted the car at Tiger and we're now proceeding back up the switchback hill to Crown Point. Around 1910, CPR decided to electrify this line to Rosland, although the plans never came off. And it was at this point, at, at the switchback, where it was planned that the West Kootenai Power and Lake Company would put a substation which would feed the electrical power to the railroad. This was to have been an experimental installation on the Rossman Hill, and if it were successful, the West Kootenai Power and Lake Company had plans to build a transmission line over to Golden in the East Kootenai and uh, electrify the main line of the CPR. However, uh, before these plans came to fruition, it was called off and never came about. The diesel locomotive that is pushing this train up the hill is a 1500 horsepower, 8700 type, capable of pushing around 400 or pulling 450 tons up this grade. The 3600 type steam locomotives that were superseded by the diesels were capable of pulling only around 200 to 250 tons. More than five or six boxcars required a helper engine. The grade is four and a half percent, and uh, this, of course, is very steep for railroading purposes. The average uh, railroad engineer tries to keep his grades between one and a half and one percent and uh, does his best not to exceed one percent. However, because of the uh, confines of this valley, in order to get this railroad from the level of the Columbia River to Rossland in 14 miles, it was necessary to resort to excessive grades. Even at that, it was necessary to put this switch back in which probably gains in elevation something like 200 feet. We're now approaching Crown Point again after having made this short trip down to Tiger. At this point, we can look back down the valley toward Warfield and we can also look up the valley and we begin to see the outskirts of Rossland. We can see Mount Roberts and we can see Red Mountain, and we can see the, the houses on the eastern edge of the town. The train is coupled up again and now proceeding toward Rosslyn. The locomotive is pushing fairly hard, and you can hear the exhaust. It's rather loud, and the uh, grade from here on in is fairly steep. Corners are tight. There could be some trouble getting up unless the rails are fairly dry this morning. section of track we're on now has most of the spikes removed and most of the bolts from the rail joints. It's not the type of track that one would want to speed over. 
On this trip, the train is traveling about 20 miles an hour. This is probably an average speed on this hill at best anyway. Getting into fairly tight corners here, you can hear the wheels, the flanges of the wheels screaming on the curves. You can hear the locomotive beginning to push harder as we hit this tight corner here. We're getting opposite Rosslyn now. We can look across the valley. We're directly south of Rosslyn. We can see pretty well the whole of the town now. It's a brilliant, sunshiny day, and this is a beautiful trip up here this morning. Approaching the big curve in the south belt of Rosslyn, this takes us around the end of the valley and then we start to head across the valley following the mountainside to the outskirts of Rosslyn. Still heavy grade, the locomotive is still pushing hard, but we are having no trouble getting up so far this morning.
this point, we had just made a brief stop to let off some of the section crew who are, whose job is to start pulling spikes at this point on the railroad. We're now proceeding back up the hill again to Rosslyn. train is now approaching the outskirts of Rossland. We're in what we call the South Belt now. We can look up, we can see pretty well the whole town of Rossland. Uh, we'll soon be getting in where they'll have to start using the whistle. There will be crossings on the way from here on in. Entering the lower end of Rossland, known as the Union Avenue Station, the whistle we just heard is the first crossing as we enter town. We're just coming alongside the old Spitzy mine now, and we'll soon be crossing another street here, and then we'll go into the big curve where the water tower used to be, and we'll swing back east and up through the town and toward the old station.
We're rounding the big curve. We've just passed the location of the old Union Avenue station and we're now proceeding up through the lower end of town. We'll soon be crossing the main highway between Trail and Rosslyn. The whistles will become more frequent at this point. We're still following pretty well the old route of the narrow gauge railroad, the uh, actual narrow gauge station. <laughs> That was a good long whistle for a crossing that's coming up here. The old narrow gauge station, the noise you just heard are branches brushing the side of the caboose here. The track has not been kept in shape during the past few years. As I was saying, the old narrow gauge station is up near the crossing of the main highway into Rossman. We're now we're entering into a rather tight spot where the train got stalled here the other day, where the grass is thick. We're passing underneath the Washington Street pedestrian bridge, but we're going to get through here without any trouble today by the looks of it. We're now rounding the bend, and when we get around this bend, we will be at the site. whistle is for the highway crossing. We're just passing the site of the old narrow gauge railroad station and now we're proceeding on up around the curve and we'll circle the town and we'll come up to the present station area about one mile from here. Although it's a mile from here, it's only about two blocks straight uphill. However, because of the steepness of the hillside, the railroad must take the long way around still maintaining its four and a half percent grade. just entering the cut into the railway yard now. This is just at the location of the old safety switch, which of course now has been removed in the last few days, so we don't have to stop for the safety switch. We'll proceed right into the cut.
We have entered the Rosslyn Yard now, and the train will switch around and pick up the crane and proceed on up toward the Y to the business of track removal. We're now sitting in the cab of the locomotive. Uh, we'll be hooking on to the crane in a minute, and then you will hear the sounds of the locomotive releasing the brakes and moving back toward the switch. You can hear the uh, diesel engine idling behind us here. We're sitting in the cab. Uh, the, the diesel will idle away until such time as Ray Comiskamy, the engineer, applies the power to move away, and then the sound of the exhaust will increase. You have just heard the air brake being released. Now the engineer is applying the power. And the locomotive is gently hooking onto the crane and we're pushing the string of cars ahead. The train is stopped and we will be preparing to reverse. now beginning to pull the string of cars and the crane backwards. We're moving backwards now toward the switch down into the rock cut which is the entrance to the yard. as Ray maneuvers the train back into the cut as we pull the string of cars and the crane out of the yard in preparation to putting them up on the track that leads up to the Y. The locomotive is actually in the cut now. Brakes are being applied, the train is slowing to a stop. We can't see the end of the train now because we're around the curve. But Ray will be getting his signal as to when to stop and reverse.
that was the signal that we're now going to proceed ahead. We can't see the end of the train, but we can see the signal man. The locomotive is slipping at this point. This is a tight curve. The train is fairly long, but we're gradually edging ahead as Ray applies sand to the rails. The train is starting to move slowly now. Locomotive is back into the cut again now. We still can't see the end of the train. Now we're coming into view. Now we can see our train it's starting to push over the switch. Again, the sound of the air brakes being maneuvered while the train is brought to a halt at this point. Ray is watching for his signal. Here we go again. He's released the brakes. We're backing off slightly here. Backing down again slightly. We've spotted a car up there. Again, the air brakes being maneuvered, the train brake and the engine brake being maneuvered. Our locomotive is back down through the cut again. We're on the curve once more. We can't see the end of our train. We've come to a, come to a stop now. Now we're moving ahead once more again. Locomotive is pushing fairly hard, tight curve. We can see our train again now, we're pushing straight ahead. We're going to cut out another car here in the yard. We're pushing up ahead. The switching operation is necessary to get the car that they want out of the string and onto the uh, spurry track up to the Y. Now we've come to a stop again. The buzzing sound you hear is an automatic indicator that sounds when the wheels start to slip.
We're continuing the switching operation here. We're back up into the yard again. train is backing off again. We're moving again once more away from the yard and toward the switch in the cut. back to the switch now. Ray will then reverse his engine and we will then push up into the switch that leads into the track toward the Y. Now we're going to couple onto a flat car that's standing on the spur here. We had just set it out a minute ago. We're coupling the crane onto the flat car. Ray is easing the train in gently to make the coupling. The coupling has been made. We will now proceed to push up the track to the Y to the point where the track removal work is going on. pause here was to load on one of the old section shacks that's beside the road here. The diesel crane has picked it up and put it on a flat car at the head end of our train. The train is backing down now to pick up a and load a second section shack in a row of four that were here in the yard. Two section shacks have been loaded and now we're pulling back down to the switch again. Locomotives back into the cut again. Now we've stopped once more. Train is now moving backwards.
train is moving back up into the yard now. train is now coming to a stop. The flat with the two section shacks on it is now spotted. <laughs> 